So uh, getting these calls on the weekend, um, she doesn't like a lot. Uh, the long hours she doesn't like. Uh, so it's, it's been tough, but I think uh, God has really come alongside her and she understands more of, of my end. Uh, as I say, I think part of it was getting her involved in the television business, uh, doing all the scoring and that stuff. I think she has a better understanding of that. Um, so. so she said, if you can't beat him, join him, Exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. So um, you're obviously a man of faith. How has that helped you get through what's been a, a really amazing run for you? I, I cannot imagine not having my faith and being in this business. Uh, there, as I say, there have been some tough times when I've not been working, but there are a lot of pressures in my job. I'm not complaining, but there are a lot of pressures. And it's interesting how towards the beginning, I let those pressures get to me and I, and I thought, well, I'll just muscle through them and trying to muscle through them does not work. So I found that I started leaning more on God, praying more for him to help me get through these struggles to deal with very difficult personalities. Uh, I know it'll surprise you, but we have a lot of big egos in uh, the entertainment business and uh, dealing with them is often difficult. And it was just interesting as I've leaned more on God. He has given me a lot more peace. The job has been uh, more fun, uh, less stressful, and it's just because I lean on him. That's what he wants us to do. So um, you obviously are a fan of 168. You've been judging for five Very years. Much. And um, could you talk about what you've seen and, and give maybe some advice to the producers out there about you know, how to handle uh, what's coming up? soon um i am amazed year after year at the uh the quality uh, that you all are able to do in 168 hours i think the advice um the, having judged for five years and watching a lot of them is to really try and concentrate on and i know you do but try and be as absolutely professional as you can um, I strongly suggest uh, shooting it, for instance, um, shooting at 24 frames instead of 30 frames. Uh, make it look as much as, as filmic as possible. Uh, try and really concentrate on your actors and your writing. It is a craft. Um, and I know it can be done. I mean, we've, I've seen some just incredible productions uh, over this last time. And everybody all has the same thing. You have 168 hours. So it, it has been an amazing run. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about why you're a beat cop still. Okay. And um, do you enjoy it? And it's, it's led to um, something else, another project of yours that uh, we'd like to hear about too. For me, I was torn between loving the television business. It was clearly a, a first choice and oddly enough loving police work and I thought okay well when I get to that point God will help me sort those two things out well he did not he allowed me to do both which I feel blessed to do that's also helped me during the times that I was unemployed uh, in the television business I've been able to work as a Los Angeles police officer I still do that and one reason that I do it is is the television business as I say is just still producing television I don't feel like I make a difference in the world. Being a police officer, I feel like I make a difference in the world. I've saved lives as a policeman. I've, I've yet to save a life uh, producing a TV show. Um, uh, and I, again, talking about the tapestry, I couldn't figure out why God would want me to do both of those very different jobs. Um, can I lead in? Um, God really put on my heart uh, to start a ministry which is called Hollywood Impact Studios. Um, which ministers, teaches inmates in jails uh, how to produce television shows, the careers within the television business. Um, I'm not sure exactly how far that ministry is going to go. It's, we've been actively uh, involved since June, teaching at the Peter Pitch's Detention Center. Uh, and oddly enough, again, it's just, it got, it's God's sense of humor. The very first guy that I spoke to about the television business, I didn't realize until about three months later, I had arrested him for heroin addiction. <laughs> um, didn't recognize him. He looked totally different, a terrific artist. 
And I went, okay, God. Uh. <laughs> so uh, you said this is the first guy you spoke to about the TV right, business. What do you right. mean? Um, one of the sheriff's deputies asked me if I would talk to this artist that was getting ready to get out about the television business. And so I sat down and, and we talked about the best ways to utilize his art in the business. And then it was, uh, as I say, it was about three or four months later, I was at the police station cleaning up some of my arrest reports and I came across one of them and I went, oh, that's funny, this guy has the same name as the guy I was just talking to. And then as I went, I said yes, and he also lives at the same place. <laughs> so. so have you made enemies working as a cop? No, uh, have I made enemies as a cop? Well, a few, yeah, maybe. a few, a few, yeah. Never any but I think trouble. I've made more friends than, than I, 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 again, I approach, God has blessed me even in the, in the police work in that my partners oftentimes are Christians. And I think it's, as, as it's important to be a Christian in any walk of life, being a police officer, it's, it's the same, same thing. Uh, I pray every time we work that he sends us on the calls that he wants us to go on and, and that we will handle it the way Christ would want us to handle it. Um, about now it's been about three or four years ago, we had a death of a, of a little baby. And um, I really felt God wanted my partner and I there on that call to deal with those parents who were asking some very difficult questions. Why would God take our son? Um, and I told my partner, we're going to stay here as long as we have to. And luckily, my partner was a Christian. And we just we sat down there. We prayed with the family. Um, it was a it was a very emotional uh, time. But I really felt like when we walked out, it was just the tiniest bit better than when we walked in. So uh, God has sent us on on many uh, interesting radio calls. That's a beautiful picture, Gary. You know, just think of all cops did that, prayed with the, <laughs> the criminals, uh, or I don't know. I guess that's victims. a fantasy world. Victims, yes. Um, as far as your future projects, I know you've produced one film, and mm -hmm. uh, you wrote that film. Uh, are there any more plans for making Well, films? I'm hoping now at some point uh, to be able to produce some uh, family-oriented Christian product through Hollywood Impact. The film that I uh, produced back in 92 was not a Christian project. It was just a, it wasn't bad either. It was just a crime drama set in Skid Row. But I now would love to be able to do life-affirming uh, projects. Um, you know, I, my wife and I went to see Blindside. If you've not seen it, I strongly suggest it. And I went, this is the kind of movie I'd like to make um, that's life-affirming, uh, that shows what being a believer is all about. Well, we hope you get an, an opportunity to do that, Gary. And um 168 ha has partnered with Hollywood Impact Studios, and we did what's called the Rite of Passage Prison Edition. And we went over and we taught um, some of the inmates how to write not only screenplays, but also for print and TV. And um, I, I can't tell you how gratifying it was. If, has anybody ever been in prison ministry, you know, to prisons? It's a special feeling. These are people that went with us. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple of volunteers here that, from Hollywood Impact. But, um, you know, we, we taught them how to write as much as you can in, you know, five classes. And then we had them actually compete. We gave them 168 hours, gave them the verse, the whole deal. And two of those guys are really on fire for right. it. Right. And who knows where that goes. But uh, it, it is amazing, the talent. Um, that a lot of these guys have, I think, and I think it was one of the reasons that we wanted to go there. I realized I wanted to go into television at 14, but that was only because I got exposed to it. So many of these gentlemen have just never been exposed to anything other than the lives that they have. And it's interesting when we talk to them and show them the different careers, they never had any idea that there, was, that there were those kinds of jobs uh, out here. So.